Hey everybody, welcome to my Marksmanship Hunter Guide. In this guide, we're going to go over my UI. We're going to go over the Hunter's Kit, what you have working for you, whether it's survivability, utility, and how your damage works as a Hunter. Then we're going to go over talents and conduits, and then we'll jump into a rotation, which will include kind of like three parts. You're going to see how you're going to pop your cooldowns and how you're going to do your rotation on pull. Uh, we'll discuss how to do your rotation within the true shot window and then we're going to discuss how to do your rotation kind of on the fly when you have no cooldowns running. So first things first, let's get into my UI. Now UI is very subjective. You set it up how you want to set it up. What I think what's important is that you're able to see everything you need to see right in front of you and you obviously don't want it to obstruct your field of view when you're playing. Um, the more you can see with less things getting in the way the less least clutter is possible is obviously going to be a huge advantage so you'll see i have my action bars at the bottom uh, i track my cooldowns just by simply looking at my bars i know on different characters i would have my cooldowns kind of underneath my character just floating around this is what i got used to on my hunter personally i don't think it's optimal um, again it's just what i'm used to at this point and i think i'm performing all right with uh, with what I have going on here um, but if I can make a suggestion on how to even improve upon my own UI it would be to maybe track my cooldowns uh, right underneath my character so that I don't have to always look down so if you guys see when I'm recording some videos or sorry not recording videos but uh, when I'm doing mythic plus dungeons or raiding um, I'm looking at my character some of the time and then you'll see my eyes looking down and when I'm doing that it's because I'm looking at uh, my charges on say aim shot or uh, cooldown on rapid fire. Um, but yeah, just having it underneath your character is definitely optimal. So your eyes don't have to look away uh, from where your character's standing. And that definitely helps with, uh, uh, I guess, standing outside of mechanics, uh, etc. So that being said, uh, just show you here when I'm in combat. This is what my UI looks like. I have my health bar here, my target's health bar. Um, then I have target of target underneath. So if, if the training dummy here was a boss i'd be clicking on it i would see the boss's hp and then if the this training dummy was a boss he would he would obviously be targeting my tank most of the time so you would see the target right here which in this case is me because i'm clicking on myself and then right underneath here is my focus which i have a uh, hotkey let me just clear it and then my focus is target so this comes from doing some pvp but it, it's so useful in pve just to see um who the boss or whatever mob your tank is tanking uh, to see what that target is targeting. That was a mouthful that sounded confusing. Basically, I just want to see what the boss or the, the mob we're killing is targeting. If I see all of a sudden it's targeting somebody else, either it's doing a spell on a specific target uh, or the tank lost aggro. Um, but to help with that, and it's also my health bars here. Now these are training dummies and the health bars don't normally show how they do in a dungeon. In a dungeon, as you'll see in some of my other videos, basically, if I'm attacking a monster and the tank has aggro on it, the health bar is going to be blue. Uh, I like it plain and simple. If the tank has aggro, or basically, if I don't have aggro on something, the health bar is going to be blue. And if it's attacking me or chasing me, it's going to be red. So you'll see during Spiteful Week, how uh, in most of my videos this past week, uh, the health bars of the Spitefuls are red because they're targeting me and I can quickly and easily see that um, personally I'm colorblind so I need very distinct colors but I think even for people who aren't colorblind there's definitely an advantage to using colors that contrast each other right so you got the red and blue which are opposite sides of the spectrum so red when something's attacking me blue when the tank has aggro on it um, so yeah just having a nice decluttered UI and informative, I guess, bits of information, whether it's the, the target's health bars or your cooldowns under you. Um, it'll definitely help you just kind of be more relaxed and more tuned in on your gameplay. All right, so that's everything on UI. I'm doing this in one recording, so hopefully I get everything across in one take here. Uh, I will be getting my hands on some editing software, uh, Adobe Premiere Pro, very shortly. Uh, but for now, we're just doing everything in one take, so hopefully it comes out smoothly and uh, that I, I don't ramble on too long. So next thing I want to share with you guys here, um, I've gotten put these on my, just some extra bars here. 
Uh, these are your utility, or sorry, not utility, survivability abilities as a hunter. Some of these are self-explanatory. Uh, they're pretty straightforward. Um, but I'll just kind of give you some situations where you would want to use these abilities. So first you have disengage. These are not in order of importance. Uh, they're all pretty situational. Uh, disengage I'll definitely use a lot more often. So I'm using the talent, uh, which one is a post ace, where when I disengage, it frees me from movement impairing effects and also increasing my movement speed. This just in general is just great for movement. You get that little speed boost every 20 seconds and it frees you from roots. Uh, this helps you with a lot of mechanics in Mythic Plus and in certain situations in raids. Next you have Aspect of the Turtle. Actually, real quick, going back to Disengage, obviously you can use it to uh, move out of mechanics that are on the floor, but also to line of sight certain casts. Sometimes you'll see a mob targeting you, and then you can line of sight around a corner and the, uh, the mob's line of sight will be broken, so he will stop his cast uh, or try running towards you, etc. All right, so next is Aspect of the Turtle. Uh, basically, it's used as an immunity in most situations. You can absorb almost anything. Certain dots that are already ticking on you uh, will still hurt you, but most of the time it can be used as an immunity. Um, again, a lot of Mythic Plus mechanics or raid mechanics that will pretty much one-shot somebody. Um, and then, yeah, you can pop your turtle and run into these mechanics and you'll be safe. Next is Survival of the Fittest. This is your three minute cooldown. Um, if you're not using a pet, you get access to this as a hunter. 20% less damage for six seconds. It's not great as a defensive compared to other classes uh, kit, but you know, this is what we have. Use it, <laughs> use it uh, when it makes the most sense. Season one Shadowlands, I use this a lot on pride. Um, basically when the pride's at about half HP, that's when I tend to use it because the pride damage stacks up a lot and you just don't want to use it right away on a pride uh, there are certain other boss mechanics where you can use this on the third boss in sanguine depths for example uh, you're supposed to collect on average three orbs and then pop uh, sorry you collect three orbs and then you should be fine for the blast if i only get a chance to pick up two orbs then i'll make sure to pop survival of the fittest as well just to kind of mitigate some damage and help my healer next we have thing death this is very useful to obviously drop aggro if you accidentally pull aggro on something or, you know, hit something off into the distance with an arrow and, uh, whoops, you can thing death and nobody saw anything. Um, but what's really great about it is that you can get out of combat, which will let you go into camouflage. I think camouflage is a nice heal, um, but we'll talk about camouflage later and its uses. But the main thing for thing death, practical uses here, if a mob is focusing you with a cast and he's about to shoot you with something, you can thing death. And it'll cancel the mob's cast. So you just obviously tap it. Then you're fang in death. You drop combat. And uh, yeah, if somebody's casting something on you, they'll stop. Next, you have Exhilaration. It's a two-minute cooldown. Heals you for 30% of your HP. Uh, if you have the Conduit, where is it? The Endurance Conduit, Rejuvenating Wind. Um, this 213 version of it will let Exhilaration heal you for an additional 16% of your maximum health over eight seconds. I personally like this one. Uh, I'm not using it currently, which I'll get into when we talk about conduits, but I'll soon be using it once we get this uh, second conduit slot here, or so the second endurance conduit slot once we have uh, this talent unlocked or this conduit unlocked. Anyways, I'll get into that when we get into conduits. So uh, health potions, the final thing, it's not part of the hunter kit, but it's definitely something I'm always writing with or always doing Mythic Plus with. On a five minute cooldown, heals you for 10,000 HP. That's a third, well, a third or a fourth of your health, depending on how much health you have. It's fantastic, you know? There's so many situations where I'm always saying, oh, I wish I had just one, that one extra little bit of healing to myself to help out my healer. Well, that's how you get it, through health potions. Um, it's similar to Warlock health stones. If you have access to it, use it, boom, you're golden. You're helping your healer, you're staying alive, you're not losing your food buff, you're keeping the momentum going. Uh, Health potion is definitely something you should be using. Next, we'll talk about utility. Um, a lot are pretty straightforward. Just make sure to have these on your bar. Keybind them. Always use them. They're super, super important. First up is misdirection. You misdirect to your tank. Your tank doesn't have to worry about aggro. It's as simple as that. 
every pull that I do that for some reason I'm not misdirecting because it's on cooldown if we're chain pulling sometimes misdirect is not up yet tanks seem to always have issues with aggro and it's uh it definitely makes pulls a lot more uh, chaotic so simply put use misdirect off cooldown help your tank uh here we go we got binding shot binding shot extremely extremely useful in mythic plus you put down binding shot which kind of acts like a trap it stays on the ground as it's pulsing any mob that even runs into that circle will be affected by it and the way it works if they are bound by it and then they move out of a certain range then they're snared or rooted whatever it is for eight seconds this is extremely useful on spiteful week you can see me binding shot or using binding shot on a bunch of ghosts um, they just stand in place they don't know what to do for eight seconds and you move on it's great to help your tank for kiting um, there's so many uses for it next you got tranquilizing shot it removes one enrage and one magic effect from a target i have a weak aura i don't know if i can show you guys here <clears throat> i guess it's not showing up right now but anyways uh, I have a weak card that basically pops up. It'll show me here if the target has any rage or magic effect on it. And then I can choose if I want to trank shot it. Nine times out of ten, I do. So uh, this is a very useful ability. Uh, bursting shot. This is your knockback and it applies a 50% slow. It's actually, yeah, it's a 50% slow and does a little bit of damage. So one thing that's important, it has a pretty small cone. You can knock people back, it slows them, it's great, but be mindful that it does do some damage. So if there's a CC'd mob close to you, it will break the CC. Uh, next we have Tar Trap. Pretty straightforward trap. When it's triggered, it spawns a big circle. If mobs run through it, they're slowed by, I believe, 50%. Yeah. Next you have Freezing Trap. This is good for single target CC. There you go, that mob can't do anything for 60 seconds. It's not often used as straight CC in Mythic Plus because you're always doing big pulls. So what I like to use it as is a pseudo interrupt. If somebody's casting something and my counter shots on cooldown, I can just throw this trap and it'll stop the cast. So the hunter to stop cast, you have your counter shot, you have your bursting shot, which is a knockback, which obviously cancels their cast. And then you also have freezing trap. Um, and if they're specifically targeting you, you can also thing death or disengage behind a corner. Uh, next, we got Scare Beast. This fears a beast. <laughs> it says it's in the name. Uh, there's not a ton of use of this currently. Uh, I'm thinking the other side in the Ardenweald section of the dungeon. There's a lot of beasts there. I'm sure there are some beasts in other dungeons. Um, like the, the Gorgon, the dogs in uh, Halls of Atonement. Those guys can be feared. The, the only thing you have to worry about with scare beasts is that it's a fear and the mob is going to run away and it could aggro other potential mobs um but it's just good for some situations where uh, a specific one i can think of is on huntsman altimore in castle nathria the the two shades that you have to cc oftentimes i will be freezing trap them or using freezing trap on them but sometimes the freezing trap will be somebody will break it and then because freezing trap has a 25 second cooldown and I'm responsible for keeping it CC, worst case scenario, I can use my scare beast, kind of like a backup. So uh, definitely good for interrupting cast on beast or fearing them. Next you have flare. <clears throat> this just reveals in a area. Not a ton of use currently. It's obviously good in PVP against rogues, but this is definitely not a PVP guide. Um, in several dungeons there are invisible mobs but revealing them doesn't really help too much sure the tank will know where they are but the tanks should already know where they are and if they run into a pack of mobs they should be tanking them anyway so it's not a ton of utility with flare but it's just something to keep in the back of your mind in case you know a new dungeon down the road where you need to reveal some mobs uh, it'll definitely come in handy uh, next, we've got Camouflage. I like to run with this talent. <clears throat> There's a lot of uh, invis skips I end up doing in dungeons, and instead of using an invis potion, I can use Camo. And Camo actually heals you by two per or for 2% of your max health every one second while you're invis. Um, so it's another nice, uh, nice heal to have. You can actually Fang Death, which puts you out of combat, and then you can instantly go into Camo. It's a little combo you can do. 
Uh, then last but not least, you have Concussive Shot, which is a single target slow on a target. Helps with kiting stuff. Uh, just keep in the back of your head that you have this uh, on-demand slow. All right. So, let's go ahead and hide these. No, I'm in combat. Here you go. See, Fang Death. Boom. I'm out of combat. Hide these bars here. <clears throat> All right, great. Next, let's just quickly go over how hunter damage works. We're good single target damage. We're not the highest on single target damage, but we're definitely up there. Um, we're great at three plus target AOE burst or AOE sustain. I'm talking like long sustain. It, it It's decent, but it's not as high as some other classes. But where we shine is definitely three plus target burst damage. And that's obviously because of Wild Spirits and its uh, <clears throat> uh, its compatibility, I guess, in terms of cooldown with True Shot. So we have uh, these two minute windows where we do a ton of damage, single target and AOE. And we kind of want to work our uh, our runs, or we want to plan out our cooldowns in our runs um, based on where we need the most damage every two minutes. Uh, and then our weakest point is two targets. I don't know if there's, yeah, right here, two dummies. So the way our AoE works, <coughs> if you guys are not aware, if I hit three targets with multi-shot, then I get trick shots, which makes my next aim shot or rapid fire hit how many more targets is it? Five additional targets. So right here, you'll see, boom, hits every target. Very nice. But if I did it here, I don't get trick shots. I can't cleave. <clears throat> so you always want to make sure that you let your tanks know this mechanic. Um, obviously, you're not going to do this every pug. Like, hey, tank, make sure to pull more than two targets. Sometimes there's only two targets to pull. Um, but it's just be mindful, I guess, in a pull if you're facing this direction actually that was a bad example i was able to hit this guy if i do this it's still hitting that's weird <laughs> sometimes you can be at a certain angle where you're multi-shot even if there's three targets you'll only be hitting two i guess it doesn't work with these dummies but just always make sure you're hitting three or plus three or more targets with your multi-shot so that you can get into your aim shot and rapid fire cleave so that's where we shine. We really shine in 3 plus target burst, and that's why we're brought to a lot of Mythic Plus zones right now. Um, that, accompanied with all of our utility and good single target damage, is why we we, uh, we get invited to a lot of runs. Alright, next, let's go over talents. So, <clears throat> my regular talents that I run with in raids look like this. So in this first row, you want to run with Master Marksman. Second row is Careful Aim. Third row, Natural Mending. Fourth row, Steady Focus. Uh, fifth row, Pose. Sixth, Double Tap. Seventh row, Lock and Load. These are your best single target talents. Now, always make sure to sim your character. I might do a separate video on simming your character because all of a sudden if your stat ways change or you get a bunch of items, like a different talent might all of a sudden be better for single target. It really depends. Uh, it's always good to sim yourself and you know be part of the hunter discord or read icy veins the the hunter section because these things can change even overnight if there's a patch uh but for now this is your best single target build now for cleave fights i like to go with explosive shot volley and if it's a two target fight chimera shot is better if it's more than a two target fight like three plus then streamline tends to be better so it's just something to keep in mind. I'll give you some examples here in a second. Um, but let's just pretend we're doing single target for now. So you go careful aim, steady focus, and lock and load. This would be your build. We have a look at conduits now. Your potency conduit, you want to be using spirit attunement. It makes your wild spirit last three seconds longer, which provides you with great damage and increases the damage that wild spirits brings by 14.5 percent uh definitely this is your go-to sims show that this is your highest damage uh, conduit so that's the one we're going to use for your finesse conduit i like to use reversal of fortune every time i interrupt i get nine focus back um counter shot doesn't cost any focus so you're just getting nine free focus every time you interrupt and your interrupts off the global cooldown here so um it's never a bad thing to throw out an interrupt um, and then down here for our endurance conduit, 
I'm currently using Harmony of the Turtolan because it reduces the cooldown of Aspect of the Turtle by 17.5 seconds. This is especially useful on the Huntsman Ultimar fight uh, because the more immunities you have, uh, the, the easier the fight gets. So when I use that conduit and I use Born to be Wild, which further reduces the cooldown, I can actually soak two lethal, or what's it called? The uh, Sin Seekers on that fight. So those are pretty just like specific uses. Uh, but for the time being, I'm just leaving this in here. Um, soon, so right now you'll see I'm in, I have this second potency conduit here, which is uh, Sharpshooter's Focus, which increases True Shot by 29%, uh, makes True Shot last 29% longer. In two weeks, once I'm renowned 30, I'll have access to Naya's Tools, Burrs, whatever that is. <laughs> um, this is our highest damaging conduit. I don't know if these are called conduits, but whatever, talent, whatever you want to call it. Um, so that means I'll have to shift this potency conduit into an endurance conduit. So then I'll be using, I personally like this one, Rejuvenating Wind. Makes our exhilaration heal for an additional 16% over eight seconds. So it's just more self-healing, which you don't have a lot of as a hunter. Um, this is pretty much set in stone. Like right now I could be using Rejuvenating Wind here instead. I just like running with uh, Harmony, of the Tur <laughs> Harmony of the Turtle in here. All right, next, let's go over the f different fights here. So Shriekwing, it's a single target fight. You're gonna be using this build. Next, Huntsman Ultimar, it's a two target cleave. So we'll be using Explosive Shot, Chimera Shot, and Volley. Sun King Salvation is AoE. Um, this one's heavy AoE, so we will be using Streamline instead. Artificer, single target. We'll go with this build here. Careful aim, study focus, and lock and load. Hungering Destroyer, single target, same thing. Lady Inerva. <clears throat> there is some cleave in this fight, but for the majority of it, you're just killing the boss. And your innate ability to hit three targets with uh, just multi-shot, which activates trick shots for your aim shots to cleave uh, is enough to deal with the ads on that fight so i like to stick with uh, just a pure single target build for that fight next you have council of blood for the majority of this fight it's all single target you have to kill some ads at some point but again you could opt into volley uh, but yeah it's mainly single target so this is the build i go with here sledge fist 100 single target Stone Legion General, this is Cleave, but two target Cleave, so we're going Explosive Shot, Chimera Shot, and Volley. And then finally, Sire Denathrius. Uh, instead of Chimera Shot, I go into Streamline. Because it's uh, three plus targets, a lot of the fight. Alright, <clears throat> so, the final thing in this guide that we're going to go over is our DPS rotation. Let's go over our rotation on pull. But before we do that, <laughs> let's lay down some ground rules here. So you got to remember a couple things as a hunter. Number one, let me get in combat so you see it. <clears throat> never let your focus cap. Simple as that. You never want to be sitting at 100 focus. Keep that in mind. Always do something that will prevent you from being at 100 focus. Next thing is aim shot. You'll see you have two charges on aim shot. You never want to be sitting at two charges of aim shot. When you use aim shot, you'll see I uh, it takes what is it? Oh yeah, 11 seconds to recharge another aim shot. So within this window, you have different things you can do. But you'll see my second charge is coming up, and right now it already is too late, and I'm wasting aim shot charges. So never cap your aim shot charges. And then finally, you want to use rapid fire on cooldown. Rapid Fire does some decent damage, and it also replenishes your focus. But again, keep in mind that you don't want to ever cap your focus. So if for some reason you're at 90 focus, and your Rapid Fire comes off cooldown, using it might not be the best idea, uh, because then you'll overcap your focus. So it's kind of like a rule, like don't cap your focus, <clears throat> keep your aim shot, or never have your aim shot, add two charges, and then use Rapid Fire off cooldown. Now, obviously, if there's different talents you're using here, let me drop combat and switch to my single target talents. Let's go steady focus, lock and load. <clears throat> it's 
So if you have steady focus, um, this is when you use two steady shots in a row, you increase your haste by 7%. So if I do one steady shot and I do a second one, you'll see I have a timer here in my focus bar. This is how much time I have left with steady focus. So with this talent, the rule is if you cast steady shot and you have five seconds left uh, on the buff for steady focus, you do a second one. And you'll see I got this proc here. This proc is for lock and load. Just use this as soon as you can. It's a free aim shot, which gives you uh, your precise shot procs. So let's get into precise shots. When you uh, use an aim shot, your next two or one or two arcane shots or multi shots um, uh, get a 75% damage increase. So you definitely want to use those charges as well. Now there's a lot of things to consider when you're playing. But mainly the key takeaways are never cap your focus, never cap your aim shot charges, and use your cooldowns pretty much off cooldown. Now there's a lot of different situations you might be faced with that might change these rules slightly. Uh, well, two of them you never really want to cap your focus or cap your aim shot charges. But there's some situations where you might not want to cast rapid fire or you might want to hold if you're running with explosive shot or volley. I said you want to use them on cooldown, but if you know in the next five seconds two more mobs are going to come into play and you're going to have to kill them, then you definitely want to save them for that situation, right? So you have to know the fight, know when you're going to have to use certain abilities, and it'll definitely make your DPS output a lot higher. Um, yeah, so say I was fighting this one dummy, single target, my volley's up, I can use it. But in 10 seconds, these two dummies will join the fight. Then it just makes sense to wait those 10 seconds. All right. So you have your opening rotation, which I'll get into. Keeping in mind that you never want to cap your aim shot. You never want to cap your focus. And you want to use rapid fire on cooldown. This is how you do your opener. This is the opener that's listed on Icy Veins. This is definitely what you want to be using. You basically want to misdirect your tank preemptively use double tap before the pull then you're going to start with an aim shot then you're going to use two steady shots which activates steady focus and then immediately you're going to drop your wild spirits on your target Then you're going to do one arcane shot to use up a bit of focus and then you're going to pop the rest of your cooldown so your true shot your unused trinket your racial ability if you're an orc um, if the fight calls for it your potion and then from there, you're now in your true shot window, which is basically use aim shot as much as you can. Never let it cap and just go to town on the boss. So you do that aim shot and then I believe it's rapid fire, uh, then another aim shot. Just always use your aim shots and when you can throw in some arcane shots to use up your precise shot procs. I know it's a lot of information. Seeing it on paper is probably easier for some people to understand. But here, I'll show it to you. Maybe if you see it, um, the bottom right of the screen, you'll see the abilities I'm using in order. Uh, so here we go. I would misdirect. Obviously, I have no target to misdirect you right now, so it's not going to go off. But let's misdirect. Double tap. Then we're waiting for the boss to be pulled. When the timer for the countdown to pull the boss is at like three seconds, you aim shot. And here we go. So aim shot, steady shot, second steady shot. Wild Spirits, Arcane Shot, pop your cooldowns, you go Aim Shot, Aim Shot, Rapid Fire, Aim Shot, Arcane Shot, Aim Shot, Rapid Fire, Aim Shot, Arcane Shot. Then you right now you want to go maybe just one Aim Shot, or sorry, one Steady Shot into one Aim Shot, because you don't want to get capped on your Arcane, sh on your, uh, on your Aim Shots, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, basically, during that aim shot window, sorry, during the true shot window, a lot of the rules, you can bend them because your main priority is basically just not the cap aim shot. So let's go over that again. It's basically you misdirect, you double tap, you cast an aim shot, and then you're starting. You drop your, or sorry, you do two steady shots into wild spirits, into arcane shot, into activating true shot and all your cooldowns then you go aim shot aim shot rapid fire um then i believe it's another aim shot into arcane shot into aim shot 
you just play it out as you see your abilities come up. Again, never cap your focus, never cap your aim shots. That's in your true shot window. Um, so now mid fight and your regular rotation, it's basically the same rule. It's just what I said at the beginning, use your abilities off cooldown, but be smart about it. If you're running with volley and explosive shot, if you have a couple more uh, mobs about to join the fight in five seconds, save your cooldowns. Um, never cap your aim shot, never cap your focus, and make sure you're keeping up your steady focus if you're a single target, and use your rapid fire off cooldown. There you go. <laughs> That's almost everything um, that you need to know to play Hunter. Uh, something I'll cover in the next video is going to be macros, but as a hunter, if I can give you just a quick sneak peek of that video, it's going to be to use a lot of at cursor macros. So normally when you press an ability, here, let's go with, uh, where's our freezing trap? Right here. Normally you would press your keybind and you can see this targeting circle and then you would place it. When you have a at cursor macro, wherever your mouse is, see, I didn't have a targeting circle. I just placed the ability in that area right away. So it's one less click you have to do, and then you'll be using your abilities a lot quicker. And this is obviously nice for wild spirits and volley as well. So see, no, no, no targeting circle, wild spirits, volley, easy peasy. Uh, one quick thing about volley, I guess I didn't really touch on it. Volley gives you six seconds. So while volley is happening, you get six seconds of trick shot. So you don't actually have to multi-shot um, to get into your trick shot window while that's happening. So your AOE rotation, I guess I can jump into that a little bit here. Um, you're gonna want to wild spirits, true shot, and then immediately drop your volley. And then you can aim shot, aim shot, rapid fire. So you have within that six seconds, you can get two aim shots off and a rapid fire. Um, and before you get into your cooldowns, you just want to throw in your explosive shot. So yeah, that's pretty much everything there is to know about a hunter at a high level. Um, you'll pick up on a lot of, uh, I guess, little tips and tricks in specific boss fights or specific Mythic Plus dungeons. Um, that's just something you get the more you play the class. Uh, but yeah, at a high level, that's basically everything there is as a hunter. So quick recap, we went over our UI, we went over the hunter's toolkit. We went over talents and conduits, and then the single target rotation, and I guess uh, AOE rotation as well. And a bit of, uh, we touched on a bit of the macros. So there you go. That's a guide on, uh, on the hunter, marksman hunter specifically. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching, and leave comments, like the video, subscribe, and we'll talk to you guys later. See ya.